do you call a person who believes in something without any evidence whatsoever and then applies that belief to attack innocent people? Actually, not quite what I was thinking of. There we go, feminists. Welcome to this week's... Wait, what the hell did I call it? Let's just call it this week's news with Ife. Let's get started because we got a lot of crap on our plate this time. Police find no evidence to support alleged UVA rape. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The brutal rape story told by the girl with the alias of Jackie, where seven men raped her at a Phi Kappa Psi party back in 2012 at the University of Virginia, was actually proven to be false. Charlottesville Police Chief Timothy Longo states that there is no substantive basis to conclude that what was reported in the article actually happened. This article referring to the 9,000 words story written by Rolling Stone's Sabrina Rubin Erdely, which turned out to be just a story. Now, since I have covered most of this in my previous video on the subject, I will leave you with some brief remarks. The problem with this story is that Erdely went to the university with a specific goal of finding a story about rape. She was driven by an ideological bias instead of honest journalism. In her own words, she said, Well, we were looking to address the problem of rape on college campuses. I I looked around at a lot of different campuses and I interviewed a lot of different students. I was looking to set this story at a university um, that had a good reputation, um, that, but also felt rep very representative of what, what was going on um, at American colleges across the country with regard to sexual assault. Which is why she didn't investigate further by contacting the alleged perpetrator. Which is why violence was incited against members of the fraternity who ended up being innocent. It is it's also why after reading the article, people like Chloe Angel say shit like, It is hard to read an article like this mm -hmm. and avoid the conclusion that we live in a culture that hates women, mm -hmm. just hates us. Um, it's hard to read an article like this and conclude that the men in this culture, boys and men in this culture, are raised to see women as not just less than them, but in some cases as less than human. It leads to the conclusion that there is a rape epidemic, even though violent crimes have significantly dropped in the US in the recent times. Rape is of course a problem, but feminists are making it seem more of a problem than it actually is, like come claiming that 20% of women get raped. This is dangerous because it demonizes college boys, creating a lynch mob-like mentality that, shall I repeat, believes any outlandish claims without any evidence whatsoever. Phil Robertson made this really nice descriptive story about what he imagined happened to this atheist family. Two guys break into an atheist home. He has a little atheist wife and two little atheist daughters. Two guys break into his home and tie him up in a chair and gag him. And then they take his two daughters in front of him and rape both of them and then shoot them. And they take his wife and decapitate her head off in front of him. And then they can look at him and say, isn't it great to not have to worry about being judged? Isn't it great that there's nothing wrong with this? There's no right or wrong. Now is it, dude? And then you take a sharp knife and take his manhood and hold it in front of him and say, wouldn't it be something if this was something wrong with this? But you're the one that says there's no God, there's no right, there's no wrong. So we're just having fun. We're sick in the head. Holy shit, this man is a psychopath. He goes all this way to create this elaborate, incredibly descriptive story of an atheist family getting brutally raped and murdered just to spin the point that all oh, atheists don't have any morality. Look, nobody needs religion to be moral. I may not be a philosopher, but I sure as hell don't need to be Aristotle to figure out that belief in a supreme being isn't the only thing keeping us from going savage and killing each other. I believe that morality is based on evolution or survival of the fittest, as in some point in time it simply became convenient for early cavemen to stick together and those who pick problems died off faster so they couldn't survive to continue their aggressive traits through breeding. Then humans eventually evolved to have some form of shared niceness for the most part. 
It's just like that Russian experiment where they pacified foxes over 50 years to become like domesticated dogs. And besides, if the only thing that's keeping you from doing those things, then I'm glad as hell that you aren't an atheist, Mr. Robertson. The next story is so ridiculous, I'm not even gonna bother going into it. I'm simply going to read the title. Feminist conference says clapping triggers anxiety, asks attendees to use jazz hands instead. <sighs> Good job, feminists. I really congratulate you on this wonderful thing that you did. Bo Bergdahl, the American surgeon who disappeared off his platoon five years ago in Afghanistan, subsequently held captive by the Taliban for five years, then was traded by the U.S. government for five Taliban detainees from Guantanamo Bay, has been charged with desertion and misbehaving before the enemy. Sources differ on what happened that night. The Taliban says that he was ambushed after being drunk off base, and he said that he fell behind on a patrol. But what is certain is that in one of the last emails he sent to his father before he disappeared, he expressed his discontentment towards the U.S. military and what they did there. Even saying that he became ashamed to, to call himself an American. Now, it is also important to note that a lot of soldiers serving with him really did not like him for what he did, especially after six other soldiers died trying to look for him. Whether he intentionally deserted or just simply fell behind is not confirmed yet. It still remains clear that what he did was incredibly irresponsible and endangered his fellow soldiers. He endangered the people who served with him and he used up a crap load of resources, time and effort to find him and bring him back. Even if he did desert because he was unsatisfied with the war effort, he could have found another way to express himself against the war, one preferably that won't have cost six of his fellow soldiers' lives. Now, there's also this huge, important news story that happened this week, a great tragedy that affected many lives worldwide. Is it the crash of the German wings flight that killed 150 people caused by the co-pilot who previously had pretty much no problems except a couple months of depression locking the pilot out. Well, actually, according to Twitter, no. 150 people dying is not a tragedy, according to Twitter. We tell you what a tragedy is. A guy left a band. That's a tragedy. According to Twitter teenagers, this is the real tragedy happening. Don't worry, fangirls. You can do this. You can carry on without Zayn. I'm sure that One Direction will find a replacement for Zayn. I know it. Hey, when Pete Best left the Beatles in 1962, what did John, Paul, and George do? They didn't just give up. They went out and found another Beatle for them. And that Beatle's name was Ringo Starr. And you guys are going to find your Ringo Starr. And you have no idea who I'm talking about right now, don't you? 